So I'm going to give you sort of three things that anyone can do when they want to convert a live course into a self-paced course. And, and these are things that I would recommend at least considering or doing as you sort of make this transition or as you're sort of uh, iterating on it. So the first one is, you know, I would look at your live course and pretend that you had to eliminate 25% or more of the material. Pretend there was this rule that was like, okay, here's all the stuff you teach and do in the live course. And to make it on demand, you got to cut 25%. What would you eliminate? Just as a hypothetical exercise. I think that in most cases, and this is true of content in general, what you will find when you go through that exercise is chances are it will make the course stronger, not weaker. So it's possible that your live course was 20 hours worth of stuff. The 15 hour version might be stronger. So that's just an exercise worth doing. Maybe not. But my guess is when you go through with the sort of forced attitude of if I had to eliminate stuff, not is this good, is this helpful, but if I had to cut, what would I cut? And then take a step back and look at it, you might find that it's stronger and it might tighten your on-demand product. The next one is which elements of the live course generated the most energy and excitement when they were done live? One of the advantages of having done a live course is you can see in real time how people are reacting to the exercises, to the whatever, what are the things that people were like, oh my God, this one was great. I had done a cohort uh, a while ago about how to get clients for your newsletter. And there were certainly things where it was like, wow, this one really moved the needle. Those elements that were the most powerful, depending on what they are, might be the ones that you want to turn into or keep as live elements. So that's a way to surface if you're going to have a bit of this hybrid and go, look, here's the on-demand thing. But those are the moments that you know, because that's going to make, if people buy and it's the on-demand and there's a couple live things they can come up to or come to, you want those live things to be the ones that are really like, wow, that was powerful. So that's the second thing to consider. The third one is kind of related to that. Consider selling the live components as a separate product and or offer a package deal for people who want both. So if you pull this apart and go, here's the on-demand foundational stuff of this product. Take it, do it. You can go through the exercises on your own time. Maybe it gets you access to a community or whatever it is. Awesome. Have fun. If you want the full package, if you want to upgrade, if you want a bonus thing, we do this series of live things. And again, based on what your product is, you can figure out there's probably a logical way for it. Here's the foundational stuff. Here's the live exercises where you're going to get feedback. You're going to get breakout sessions. You're going to get whatever. Now you sort of, again, you have sort of separate but related products, right? It makes sense for people to buy both. It makes sense to buy one for the people that don't, the live thing is too much or the time doesn't work, whatever. And it's also possible, depending how you frame it, that some people might buy the live one without the foundational stuff. Most cases they would do both, but now it affects, it impacts your pricing. It impacts sort of the whole thing. 